<laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, um, I wrote this at three in the morning. I believe God gave me the words. <laughs> the, uh, I'm so humbled and honored to be before you all. I'm especially nervous following two of the most amazing speakers I've ever met, Dr. Goka and Charlie Kirk. They're, they are so knowledgeable, and I'm very new to this, so I'm gonna do something a little different. Um, I'd like you all to use your imagination and come with me on a short journey back in time. Like, whoo, a, little, a little over 10 years ago, I was an alcoholic and a crack cocaine addict. On January 16, 2009, God freed me from these and other addictions and started me on a path to a restored heart. Praise Jesus. I woke up from years of addiction and I was oblivious as to what was going on in our country. What I saw before me were friends unemployed, terrible political correctness, people saying happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas, and people trying to take God out of everything and not even acknowledging Jesus Christ. I saw I saw myself thinking back in time to my childhood when seeds of patriotism were planted in our schools, like when we pledged allegiance to the flag and recited that we were one nation under God. I now saw high prices, a poor economy, high crime, police getting attacked for doing their job. The uh, family values and morality were missing. A president was apologizing to the world for us being the USA and giving billions of dollars to evil empires. A new evil was taking over called ISIS. Quite frankly, it looked like the end times prophesied in the Bible. I saw my family and friends living in fear what had happened to our country. I now bring you back in time to the summer of 2015. I see Donald Trump coming down an escalator and announcing he's running for president. For, for, me, for me, it was a divine and, or, and miraculous moment. I felt that something miraculous was about to unfold. I then I found myself wanting to learn something I knew nothing about, which was politics. I didn't know a liberal from a conservative. I started reading about it, and I couldn't believe what I read. I definitely felt, know who I am. <laughs> my biggest surprise was that I couldn't find any crossover. I tried in my mind to make common sense out of this and why anyone would want to be where we had gone as a people in a country. I didn't make any sense what, what, what people were doing. And now we go into back in time to 2016 and I see myself in divine appointments and one was especially important. Donald Trump invited me to meet him at Trump Tower in New York City. I walked into his office with high hopes on August 15, 2016. I walked out of that office after meeting with him and I knew God had chosen him for such a time as this. God answered our prayers, our millions of prayers, and gave us grace, and a miracle happened on, October, on November 8, 2016. We were given a second chance and time granted to get our country with, back on track with our conservative values and getting people saved in Jesus' name. As I stand before you today, I see the greatest president in history. Of course he is, he was chosen by God. I see record low unemployment. I see from African Americans to Hispanics at an all time low. I see five million new jobs created since Donald Trump took office. I see wages going up. Entrepreneurs are taking risks again with consumer confidence at an all time high. I see GDP growth approaching 4%. I see ISIS demolished and trade deals getting made and getting done. I see promises made and promises kept. I feel hope. We finally have a common sense, pragmatic, conservative president who keeps his word. I now realize how important politics are and how they affect everything we do. 
But what I don't understand is the hate. Now I turn the channel and I see a world of no common sense and hate for our president. Why would people want to have no borders and drugs coming into our country when we have the worst drug, ep drug epidemic in our history? I have news for them. This is very dear to me, being an ex-addict, and I was there when the president signed the 800-page opiate bill, and I know all the great things that are getting done in spite of this no common sense resistance and hate. We will beat the drug crisis in our president's next six years in office. I see a party saving minnows in California and killing babies in New York. Are you kidding me? You know, where is that common sense? One, one of the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt not kill. Well, this is going to change. Last summer, I was called by some movie producers who asked me to have a part in a movie called Unplanned. It's a true story about Abby Johnson, who was director at Planned Parenthood, and she quit after seeing what really goes on there and seeing how chi children are getting murdered. After hearing this and knowing what a great message this movie would bring, I not only said I would be in it, but I would also help finance it. And, It was, it was filmed at a secret location last year, and with God's perfect timing in history, it's coming to theaters everywhere March 29th. And uh, here's a trailer for you guys to see. Are you ready? Are you kidding? I've been waiting for this my whole life. <laughs> for me to get behind anything, I have to be 100% all in. I either go, you know, there's nothing in between. And just like with my pillow, when I went all in with my pillow, and then I find out what this movie was about and what the message behind it and, the, and everything, and it was, I, I said, I'm gonna be, I'm in 100%. You guys, um, this movie that I went in, they, um, it's been under attack, and it's got, it just received an R rating. Hello, um, where's the common sense where a 15-year-old can go out and get an abortion without permission from her parents, but you have to have permission or be with your parents to see this movie? What's wrong with that? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna all, sh we're gonna be showing this movie tonight in its entirety at seven o'clock. You guys should all watch it. It's gonna change lives. And my prayer is that this movie will stop the killings. Praise Jesus, we have a president who stands for the unborn babies and now even ones that they kill after they're born. Um, I wanna say God bless you all. God bless our president and God bless the United States of America. Yeah.